we saw that we have three displacements and three rotations to determine such that the potential energy of the beam is minimized. Let's talk about how um, ANSYS will determine those parameters. The first step, as we saw in the big ideas in the finite element analysis, is to apply the essential boundary conditions. And in this case, our essential boundary condition is that this um, end is fixed, which means that it, you know, the um, the point on the midline cannot move, so that's zero, and also the cross section cannot rotate. So these two can be determined readily from the essential boundary conditions. Now we are left with four more parameters to determine. And let's say, you know, we have, so as we change UY2, keeping everything else the same, so if we plot the potential energy versus UY2, it'll have some variation like that. And there is some value of, uh, the, of UY2 where it's minimum. And this is, this is the value we want to find. And from calculus, we know that we can find that value by setting the derivative of this function with respect to UI2 is equal to zero. The details are you know, pretty complex and so on, but ANSYS will take care of that for us. And, and so what you will get when you do that is an algebraic equation. And that algebraic equation will relate this, uh, these nodal values to neighboring nodal values, similar to what we saw in, um, in, you know, in the big ideas in finite element analysis. And similarly, if I want to find the value of the rotation at node two um, that minimizes the potential energy, I would set the derivative with respect of pi with respect to theta two equal to zero. So that's my second algebraic equation. This will give me the third algebraic equation. And this, if I set this derivative to zero with respect to theta three, that'll give me the fourth, fourth algebraic equation. So I'll get four algebraic equations, and this will be linear. And we have four unknowns left. And ANSYS will derive those algebraic equations, invert them uh, to determine these four values. So now we will know all these, um, these discrete values that we need to know. And then once we know that, you know, from post-processing, we can, in post-processing, we can determine what the deformed state of the neutral axis is, uh, what the displacement at any point in the beam is, the stresses, strains, uh, potential energy, um, anything that you want. Um, so that's, you know, that gives you an idea of the framework that's used to uh, solve the cantilever beam problem um, when you're using the euler bernoulli beam theory and how the finite element method discretizes and solves that problem. And so in the numerical solution strategy, we have reduced the problem to, do, to you know, minimization of the potential energy with respect to six parameters. That with computers, that's, you know, a tractable problem. Whereas our original problem was minimizing an integral with respect to you know, a function and finding that a non-function, that's like a super hard problem. So we have, uh, you know, so this problem is tractable and with computers and with software, boom. Uh, once we know the framework, we can apply it and get, um, get really interesting results. And this, this actually, the euler bernoulli beam theory is very useful in practice. So it's, you know, if you're spending time understanding this, it'll serve you well.